Would you like to use strong blacks like David Finch and Jim Lee doing their drawings, but it always ends up in a mess? Then make sure to watch this whole video so you know how it's done properly. My name is Dr. Rocker and now it's time to draw! What you need to know first is that every shape of a body is either a cylinder, a sphere or a block. Like you can see here. Which makes it easier to understand where your overall shadows need to be. When the light hits a cylinder from the side, the other side gets shaded. And the cylinder throws a cast shadow away from the light source. It's quite similar with a sphere. When the light hits the sphere directly from above, the shadow looks like this. If the angle changes, the shadow on the sphere needs to yield in this direction. A light source from the other direction would leave lots of darkness on our little ball. The shadow on the sphere itself is called core shadow. The shadow the sphere throws on the ground is called cast shadow. We never render a cast shadow, but more of that later. Now we will take a look at an actual comic book character. Usually the main light source hits our character from the upper left or the upper right side. Let's say the sun is shining right here. That would mean that the sphere of the shoulder would create a core shadow right here. Since there is a muscle on this sphere in the shape of a football, there would be two core shadows. The overall sphere throws a cast shadow on the upper arm. The upper arm is shaped like a cylinder, so it needs a core shadow right here. Also, the tricep develops a small core shadow. Most of the shapes when drawing superheroes are in the form of a football though. Therefore, we will concentrate on and try to understand these forms the most. The forearm has a lot of very lengthy muscles. They all need a core shadow and if big enough, they will also cast a shadow on the muscle beneath. The arm throws a shadow on the chest, but mostly on the armpit. The latissimus needs a core shadow right here. And one of the most important parts are the stomach muscles. Their form needs to be supported by their core shadow. And they throw a cast shadow on the next row from the six pack. The last row is more lengthy like that, but usually there is a belt right here, so we don't see the whole muscle. But make sure to leave enough room for the hatching lines. You can see in this example, the strong blacks end right here and the rest are hatching lines. We also need to shadow the ribs and the lowest rib gets a bigger shadow than the higher ones because the lowest are further away from the light source. The rib cage also throws a shadow here and here. There's the rib cage and here would be another big shadow. And pretty much the same is going on on the leg muscles. We need to keep in mind the overall shape of a cylinder and then concentrate on the football shaped muscles. It always works for the kneecap and the shin bone to just blacken them out. For the rest of the lower leg we use the same rules like for the arm. The head throws a big shadow on neck and torso. And the torso darkens most of the right upper arm with his cast shadow. The face will have a lot of shadows as well, but for that I already made an in-depth tutorial not long ago. Check it out, you will learn all there is to know about shading faces. And when you follow all these rules, your character will look like this. Core shadow, cast shadow. Core shadow, cast shadow. Core shadow, cast shadow. Always the same game. On an example like this arm, I will show you now how it looks if the light comes from the other side. Pretty much the same thing, just the other way around. Keep in mind the overall forms of the arm, a sphere, a cylinder and a box and try to imagine how the football shapes would need a core shadow and how they would throw a cast shadow on the shape below. Should the suit of the character be black, you just extend the dark areas. 
This is actually quite simple and should make it easy for you to draw the Batman, Black Panther, the Spawn or any other character with a black suit. In any case, a second light source will make your drawing look way more interesting. And should the background or even some other parts of your character be blackened out, a second light source will help you to show the important shapes of your hero. Just erase everything where the second light source hits the strong blacks and thus create a rim light. Make sure that it's not just a straight line. At some points the rim light is supposed to conquer more of the dark areas to make it look more interesting. For more on that subject, check out my how to use light sources in comic book drawings video. If the character is bent forward like this one, the upper body will need a lot of strong blacks. Let us stick to a light source from the upper right corner and one coming from the left side. The head will cast a big shadow on the chest. And since the chest muscles are shaped like this, a pattern like I show you here works great for the core shadow of the chest. This pattern also works on the stomach muscles. Only a glimpse of light will show through the blackened area. And by the way, I learned this from David Finch. The right bicep and the legs, especially the right one, will get a big cast shadow. Some reflections from the body will create a rim light on the right upper arm. Makes it look way more interesting. All the other shadows are self-explanatory as long as you follow all our rules. Another very important part when it comes to strong blacks is your hatching style. Should you use a lot of strong blacks, shorter lines might be the best way to hatch your drawings. The lesser you use strong blacks, like in the drawing you can see right there, the more you will be able to work with longer hatching lines without over rendering your art. But more about that in my 8 rules of hatching video. Ok guys, I think this is pretty much all you need to know about using strong blacks in comic book drawings. If you found this video helpful, it would be great if you would be able to share it on social media and also amongst friends and family. Thank you! And as always, you will be able to find these references among lots of other stuff on my Instagram account, Dr. Rocker Art. Uh, please make sure to give me a follow there, so you won't miss out on any of my great posts right there. Thank you again! And of course, should I be new to my YouTube channel, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell, so you won't miss out on any of my future videos and tutorials. And since strong blacks need proper shading, I want you to go now and watch this video. 8 rules of hatching. Daryl will tell you everything you need to know about rendering your drawing. Cause as important as strong blacks are, the rendering and hatching process will bring your drawing to life more than anything else. So see you there my friends. Thank you for watching, have a great day, don't forget to draw every day and yeah, see you there.